The first step is to collect reference pictures. This can be done using the internet or by scanning information from technical books or magazines. In this case we have a scanned image showing three sides of a Republic P-47 Thunderbolt World War II fighter airplane. The image is scanned in RGB mode even though it is black and white. This is important later on when you give the reference images a blueprint look. Before you can use the three references in 3ds Max, you have to separate them in an image editor. Most image editors share some basic workflows. The most important aspect is to have an image editor with layer functionality. First, you need to make sure the original image is one you can edit. In this case, it's as easy as right-clicking the background label and choosing to make a layer out of it. You can then select the top reference by drawing a lasso region around it. Once this is done, copy the selection to memory, usually Ctrl C, and then paste it, Ctrl V, as a new layer. Depending on the image editing software, you may need to create the new layer manually. Once this is done, you need to move and rotate the new layer to center it properly. Again, depending on the image editing application you use, it might be helpful to set a couple of guidelines to help with the centering process. In this case, a vertical guide is set at the 900 pixel mark and a horizontal guide is set at the 500 pixel line. Use transform tools to rotate the plane to point left and center it on the grid line. Once this is done, sample the light color, seemingly white, and then create a new layer between the two existing ones. Using the Fill tool, fill the new layer with that color. This creates a cleaner look for the top reference. You can now select the two top layers and combine them into one using the Merge Layers option. Hide the newly created layer and work on the nose view of the plane. First, ensure you are on the correct layer, the bottom layer, and as earlier, lasso selection around that reference view. Use the Ctrl C Ctrl V combination to create a new layer with that selection. Move the new layer to the top of the list. Move the image on this layer to center the plane's nose to the intersection of the grid lines. In some image editing applications, you can use the arrow keys to nudge the image left or right and up or down for added precision. Notice that in this case, no rotation was necessary. In a different scenario, you might have needed that adjustment as well. As you did earlier, add a new layer below this one. Fill it with the same light color and then merge it with the one on top. Hide the new layer again and get back to the original image and lasso the remaining view, the side of the airplane. Copy and paste it as you did earlier and move the new layer to the top of the list. Unhide the nose view of the plane. In order to accurately match the two views together, set the opacity of the side view to about 50%. Move the image around so that the height of the airplane in one view matches the height of the airplane in the other view. A good reference to follow would be the top of the tail. The cockpit is also a good reference, as is the propeller hub. Some image editing applications constrain the move tool horizontally or vertically by holding the shift key while moving layer contents. Once the side and nose views match, you can then hide the nose view and unhide the top view. Moving left and right only, match the side view to the top view. Finally, bring back the layer opacity up to 100% and also create a light background for that layer as you did for the other two earlier. Mm -hmm. 
you now have the extracted three reference layers. In fact, you can get rid of the original layer as you don't need it anymore. It's also a good idea to rename the three layers to Top, Nose, and Sides.